Hi, and thank you for joining me for another lecture. And friends, there has been some derogatory talk via different media sources labeling me and my group, as well as others, as rationalist. And some ignorantly have even gone as far as to say that the term rationalist is or should be synonymous with the word heretic in the Jewish world. So I thought that I would make a short response to all the anti-rationalists out there, not for their sake, but ultimately for the sake of those who might stumble on their words and attacks. Now, friends, the greatest problem, I believe, with the anti-rationalist camp is their claim that being a rationalist in some way deludes or waters down Judaism. And friends, my point within this lecture is to prove that rationalist Judaism is not only the purest form of Judaism, but what it really should be called is healthy Judaism. And as someone who has been labeled a rationalist, I think the argument doesn't really lie within us deluding, but rather with the question of what we consider Judaism. And friends, you will find that this last statement of mine is applicable across the board within virtually any neo-mystic versus rationalist argument. In other words, in most cases you will have the rationalists stripping away some perhaps later accepted religious belief and the neo-mystic having a hard time letting go and accusing the rationalist of being a heretic uh, for basically collapsing his theological umbrella. And friends, the reason I label my opponents as neo-mystics is because in terms of reasonable arguments that attempt to further clarify and improve Judaism, it is modern mysticism that is usually left throwing stones. Not that for the rationalist, mysticism is not important, because honestly, anyone familiar with Tanakh knows that the mystical and the metaphysical is very, very much present all through the text. No, the difference is that we choose to use a systematic theological framework of what's binding in terms of what we consider Judaism. In other words, what we consider theologically absolute, instead of just blindly running with what is placed before us. No, friends, this is not an option for us, nor should it be for anyone religiously serious about understanding ethics and the will of the God of Israel. For example... One of the many attacks lunged at me and my counterparts is the notion that we insult the sages or modern day rabbis just because we happen to disagree with what they have to say about metaphysical issues. And my response to that is, so what? Where has it ever been said that one is not allowed to disagree on metaphysical issues in the Jewish world? And friends, please listen closely to what I'm saying because this is actually a theological principle, a rule not to mention common sense in the Jewish world, or at least in the Torah world. And that's that the metaphysical can only stem from Torah. In other words, only because I tell you that I have a juicy metaphysical insight that only I or my family is aware of, why on earth would you consider that anything but possibly just a good story? And for sure, for sure, not something theologically absolutely true. And that's really the whole argument in a nutshell. One group tries to deify everything they ever heard a rabbi say, and the other understands everything in perspective to who said it, where it comes from, and what weight does it carry. And that's all. Now, can we disobey what the rabbis, i.e. our sages from the Talmud, decreed? Absolutely not. Why? Because the Torah, yes, the Torah, my friends, a binding source, told us that we must obey the court, i.e. the Sanhedrin and its members, but only, only in terms of practical matters that pertain to keeping and guarding mitzvot, and not in terms of belief, no matter what they tell you to believe. Why not belief? Because, friends, belief only comes from Torah, from the five books. And honestly, who can improve on that? Because honestly, friends, do you think some human is going to explain the secrets of the divine? In other words, where did he learn them from? And if that was the case, what would ever stop someone from completely taking Judaism on a different path that it was not intended to go on if there weren't any limits on revelation? Because, friends, we must remember what Judaism is, and that is Torah and Halacha and that all and anything else is secondary and regulated to commentary. Now, I understand that some non-biblically based irrational ideas on Torah and or Halacha may help give you answers for perhaps things that the Torah is silent on. And that's fine, but friends, that does not mean we have to call it Torah also. And this is the main huge division between mystics and rationalists. Now, apart from the theological framework that we as Jews are obligated to follow, one can even say that our sages, Chazal, valued the rational even over what was accepted as supposed Mesorah. 
One example with this is what is known as a sevora, or how Ashkenazim say, a svora, a logical argument that carries almost the same weight as a biblical proof, solidifying the idea that the logical and the rational even played a huge part in the formulation of many, many halachot. And friends, another odd approach of the non-rationalist camp, and I think one of the most idiotic tactics that can be pursued, and even worse, even advertised as something Jewish, is the attempt to achieve practical, physical results via the implementation of non-Torah-based Kabbalistic practices. In other words, taking human, mystical opinions and giving them practical, earthly consequences like the notion of good luck attached to amulets or the addition or the deification of rabbinic prayers, or even learning all day and putting your wife to work thinking that this in itself actually betters the world in some way, or even worldwide unified prayers from Mashiach that many rabbis teach could actually force God if done properly. Metaphysical ideas along with their consequences that do not appear in Torah, my friends. In other words, you actually have newcomers to Judaism being taught and educated by rabbis who espouse similar beliefs, putting their faith in nonsense, and when the results for their mystical actions don't pan out, they feel cheated by the Creator and drop Judaism altogether. Or worse, the attempt to make every halachic decision have a mystical or metaphysical consequence instead of just a practical one, which is really the gateway to OCD Judaism. And friends, this lecture does not only apply to accepted mystical groups, but actually it equally applies to what is understood as Messianic Judaism today. In other words, what is Messianic Judaism apart from an early Jewish mystical sect that went viral after being endorsed by Rome? Ultimately, offering the world, in my philosophical opinion, a watered-down form of Judaism, very, very similar to what mystics have done in the Jewish world today. In other words, a whole belief system that cannot be justified by the five books alone, our only revelation of the Almighty's will. Look, friends, any path you take in Judaism should ultimately not be an end unto itself, but rather a means to a greater end. In other words, everything non-Torah-based that your group may happen to do is only and should only be done to get you to perform the mitzvot in Torah more profusely. The problem is that many take the movement they are in as the actual goal. In other words, that if people don't do it their way, then in some way they are breaking Torah and Halacha, and worse, they even begin calling their customs Torah and or Halachic when they clearly are not. I was actually discussing this topic of the supposed authority of practical Kabbalah with, with a Talmud of Rabbi Vare Yosef. And the final conclusion made by the Rav is how can we not accept neo-mysticism or what is known today as Kabbalah? How can we not accept it as binding in our lives and amongst the Jewish people when so many Kedushim, the holy angelic individuals, i.e. our great rabbis of the last 600 years, also accepted it? And friends, how could you argue with that? And that's pretty much, friends, how any discussion with the mystic will begin and end. In other words, proof and sources, who needs them? Or another common response is, oh, you think you know more than Rabbi X and Rabbi Y who also embrace these ideas? Which your answer should then be, perhaps, yes, on this topic. <laughs> because honestly, do you think we should only care that so many rabbis in the last 200 years believed in an idea as a form of justifying that idea as true? I mean, where is the halachic source for that? Or where is the source to dress like Polish nobility of the 16th century, which is what I what I believe one of the biggest obstacles separating the modern world from taking anything we say seriously and the short answer is friends is that one group in a healthy and ultimately socially ethically productive fashion chooses to understand the belief system of the God of Israel via the prism of his Torah and the halachic framework authorized within it and the other has just basically made gods out of their rabbis and Torah from whatever comes out of their mouth. Making Judaism or living a Jewish life virtually impossible. Mainly because mystics have presented Judaism as some metaphysical conundrum that virtually no one but a supposed Kabbalistic Torah genius can decipher for you. And which ultimately makes individuals completely opt out in trying to even understand or explain what they claim to believe in. And assume that it's just simpler to join some mystical bandwagon that attempt to decipher and explain Torah 
for yourself. Which is why here at Dor de A, we don't tell you what to think, but rather teach you how to think in a halachic fashion. In other words, we give you the tools not only to understand what is actual authoritative Torah and halacha, but we help from an intellectual perspective, we help you package what you believe so that you can properly present it to someone else. And friends, if you're hearing me today and you feel theologically let down by what you may have heard Judaism is, I want to welcome you to embrace true Torah, logical, and rational Judaism. For more information on everything Jewish, please visit doordea.com. Thank you.